All right, welcome back, Aries Desi GS here. In today's video, we're looking at Clicks and Scented. Clicks has swapped from being an IGL type player, and now it's just being a fragger again with Scented, and they're working really well in scrims. And I think these guys have the potential to easily get top five in FNCS and do really well in cash cups this season. Looking at a whole lot of things for early game, perk choices, how to get caches, what these guys do for mid game rotation for a few guys, and then everything end game, which is going to be really important, such as comms, how these guys get refreshes, how they use katanas, how they're actually rotating end game with those katanas, and everything that you guys need, as well as how center takes low ground, which is very useful. All right, let's get straight into this with early game. So for Clicks and Scented's early game, they're landing over here at Racetrack. This is by far one of the best POIs and duos this season. It's mid-map, really good third opportunities, and really good loot. And one thing they do straight away is when they realize they're uncontested, like they are in these scrims that we're watching, they go ahead and instantly go and get the katanas that spawn nearby. So prevents anybody else from stealing them from them, means they're going to have guaranteed double katana this game since two spawn over here. And also it makes their early game path a lot quicker because of course they can katana around, save some time, and also means they're going to get those good surge bots and be the first team there, as always. So this is what you should be doing during early game this season, especially with these zone changes. Make sure you go ahead and get all of your metal early. You can mostly get your wooden brick on the way. And then as you get your first perk choice around this time in the game, which when Clicks gets his, he goes ahead and actually goes over to the key box that's nearby. If you don't land on Katanas, you can get a Katana from a key box very likely. However, if you just have a spare key, you can get a better shotgun. Or in this case, it's a better choice to get a better red eye for Surge because this is going to be a stacked game. And then from here on out, this is pretty much the meta loadout that you guys can be running. Using a Harrod shotgun, a red eye for Surge, if you're not playing in a stack surge games, I'd recommend taking an SMG or maybe a pistol if you guys like using the pistol. And then, of course, you need a double heal and a katana. If you don't have the ability to get a katana in your games, I would recommend running triple heal. You're just going to have to sacrifice heals while you do your rotates. And of course, katana is going to be meta this season. It's extremely strong. Okay, so one of the most broken things out of the season are these caches. You're going to get some that spawn in quite far away from you that are marked by other teams, and they're going to go for them as well. And you also might have the opportunity to steal one, like Center does in this game, where you can actually steal somebody else's cache. What I recommend doing is putting a whole load of metal on the cache that you go for it, especially if you're landing at a split drop. It's going to be really important that you guys go for these caches because it's going to give you better guns and better heals, as well as some of your metal back, since a lot of the north side of the maps don't have metal in them. And as you can see here, Clicks goes ahead and recovers his cash while Scented steals the other cash as well. So that means that these guys are going to have four slurp juices each, which is unbelievably good heals. Those can take you from up from 30 HP white the whole way up to 200. They're so broken. And he also gets a better shotgun and he could possibly run an SMG if this was a stack surge game. One thing that I'd recommend doing as well for your mid game to keep your heals good, especially if you've got a cash, you don't really want to waste that slurp juice before end game, is taking Jelly Angler and actually saving it for when you're boxed up near a river. There's so much more water on the current map. And also, if you guys didn't know, there's actually a building on top of Mega City where there's a fishing pond, so you can fish up there as well, which is absolutely broken. Clicks decides to actually take Aerolift here though, which is definitely a good choice. It means that you can actually have a lot more mobility end game and control where you land with the katana a lot easier. One thing that Clicks and Scented do a lot, and this is one thing that you guys need to do if you're an IGL, is learning how to stagger your rotates into zone. What I mean by this is these guys were boxed up down here on this river. They staggered up to these rocks right here. And then as zone is going to go ahead and show up, they've already got a little bit of distance behind the people on edge of zone, which means that they can stagger again and get to this further position, as you can see. They get a little bit further in. Now they're actually in a position here where they've done two separate rotates, have their in zone so they don't have to move. Have a center makes a very good call in a second here after he heals up after getting beam, which is actually to commit towards getting center of fourth zone. Similar to center third last season, if you get center of this zone right here, it's actually really strong. He marks the center of zone as you can see right here, and they decide to box up near center. And this is going to mean that you don't have to rotate as far later on. You also avoid the awkward positions where zone shrinks in by about 30%. Because you're center zone, you're pretty much guaranteed to get the next zone. You guys should know that all zones are predetermined and you can actually use this information in the current season with these partial zones. I'm going to be trying to get some more data and stuff done on this. But from what I've seen so far, as you can see here, this is seventh zone. So it's closing in this way and it's actually expanding out this way. Just about 12% of the zone is outside, which I think based on what I've seen so far, it means that the next zone, because of course it's expanding that way, is going to go towards this bottom half side where it wasn't closing in. So as you can see, the 80-20 zone, or this 8 zone ends up pulling down this way. 
Sentin actually calls a really nice timing on the rotate here for this 8 to 20 zone. Is he waits for a second for a few people to start rotating ahead of him. And then Katana is straight up, as you can see here. And he gets into that dead side, right? Exactly like the dead side of 50 50 and how powerful that was before. You can see he lands in this dead side, basically in the stone for a second, which means that they can only really get shot by people in this area. And of course, all these people on this top hand side have to be rotating down into this zone. It's a really smart strategy you can, guys can use. Just land in storm slightly on this 80 20 zone. Now, because Clicks Incentive rotated towards the dead side of 8 zone, they actually have a really good opportunity to spray people and hold them as they come in with this regular rotate. Clicks gets a free kill right here. And also, these guys don't have to worry about people pickaxing onto their walls or actually making a play on them because they're so dead side. There's nobody else really around them. There's only one team near them. Also, if you guys remember what I was saying with zone predicting, so 7th zone closed in this way, 8th zone closed in going north to south like this. Take a guess as to where first moving is going to pull. Or ninth zone. It pulls directly into these guys on front side, on that dead side. They get zoned directly to them, which means they only actually have to go about 15 or so meters into zone here. So let's get into this endgame stuff, the whole section on endgame. Alright, for endgame this season, the meta is to have double katana and try to just not take any fights unless you need them to actually get yourself into a position where you've got good heals for heal off. These guys should win the game just based on heal off if they don't take any damage during endgame. So how do you avoid taking damage during these endgames? You want to make sure you avoid being on the edge of zone, sort of on this red line right here where there's going to be a whole lot of teams boxed up. You don't actually do what these guys do here, which is to go straight up with the katana. So let's take a look at how they do it. They go straight up once, twice, three times, and then as they're going straight up, they look down to scout, and they get into this nice position here, where they're nice and early, and they're also, as you can see, avoiding that red line there, which can be really busy. Instead, they're over here to the side, and they can actually get a little bit further in, which means they can look back for surge, and look back for a potential refresh play, and there's nobody looking at them, because they're front side. Now, a second moving plays, these guys are going to do the exact same thing, which is to go ahead and double Katana out and then go straight up. So you can see they go out right here and then they go straight up. You can potentially think about chopping a hell or going for height at this time, depending on the type of game you're in. But these guys decide to go straight up three times again and then float down. If you have Aeros at this point, you can obviously deploy it to land a little bit more front side as you get a little bit lower down. But Scented is going first, of course, so he's like a second ahead of clicks here. He builds and builds floors out for clicks. So he's building all of this extra space right here where clicks can land on very safely. And then as you can see, he's able to connect, get straight into his box. And now they're in a really good position where they don't have to do too much for the rest of this game. Take a look at these really clear comms by Sent in this end game. He comms the plan. He comms which side of zone they're going, which is the left side. And then he also comes when he's going to do it, which is right now. And again, take a look at what he does. As he lands, builds this one connecting floor where Clicks is going to land, and then he actually goes forward every single time. Don't just land and box up, because that means that your teammate's going to be a scuffed position where they can actually go ahead and get pumped as they're getting into your box. Now, as they're in the end of zone early here, they're going to actually part forward a little bit further, so they get deeper into the end of zone. They're not just boxing up right on the edge they get a little bit further in and then again they're gonna look back and look for a potential hold kill or potential refresh spray down play in this position also one thing that's really important for this season as you just saw there is actually waiting for your katana charge to be ready so you can actually use two if need be don't just continuously go with one charge in your box Take a little bit longer to actually part forward, get two katanas. It's going to save you more mats in the long run during an end game. And then now again, they land elevated. And as you can see here, Tented didn't do the correct thing, which is to actually build some floors out so the clicks can land on. Clicks gets blocked off and he actually almost dies because of this. Just a very small mistake end game, almost gets him killed. Now, when we're halfway into first movie, this is when Clicks and Center decide to go for their first refresh. Take a look at what they go ahead and do. Clicks heals up for a second, and Center spots an opportunity where there's people fighting. The easiest refresh you can get is just capitalizing on somebody else being in a box or actually going for a refresh himself. 
So you can see they double spray the wall and pickaxe at the same time. They take out the one player. They fight off the other team, which is really crucial. And while Clix is actually fighting off the other team, Sentin is making sure the loot is secure. He's getting this control of the wall here, and he's also getting the control of the wall over this side. Brilliant squares by me. And that means that their loot is completely safe. Really important to make sure that your loot is safe and you own all the edits as you go for it. Now, after these guys go ahead and actually get this refresh, take it what they do. They don't panic and start playing solo and start trying to katana forge, which I know a lot of people do. Instead, they tank storm like this and they tarp in. Whenever you get a refresh, don't be afraid to just use the mats that you've got and tarp in for a second to make sure you're both healthy and alive. It's really crucial this season. So as these guys go ahead and tarp in, this is where Sentinel makes a really good call, which a lot of players wouldn't make, which is to actually go down and start claiming low ground. If you've got to remember, they just got a big refresh on a duo from getting two of the bodies from it. Clix has got around 400 mats, which you just comed. And Sentinel goes down and claims low ground. This is a really smart play, especially as we come into farm moving here. This is the limit zone going into farm moving. Right now, if zone goes ahead and actually plays north, as you can see, Sentinel's easily able to wrap around this side and control this right hand side of zone. If zone pulls far and keeps on pulling far, then they've already got front side, which is really good. And if zone plays down here towards the south, then again, Sentinel can just continue to tarp and wrap around to zone that side and control the left hand side. It's basically a really good play to do if they get any of these types of zone. Of course, zone goes back, they might run into an issue where they run up to that hill. However, around 75 to 80 percent of the time zone is going to keep playing forward in this situation which is exactly what happens here zone plays north it doesn't pull as far as you can see which is why actually playing lower is a little bit better this season you don't need as many bats for it and these guys as i just said are going to stick towards this right hand side of zone the entire time center moves one box towards the right comes for clicks to farm the tree now let's get into how they actually close this game out from low ground Okay, so as you can see there, Sentinel went ahead and comm that they should box fight their lair, which is just time for clicks to whip out the box fight map and start zero pinging people. Right, so how do they go ahead and do this? First of all, the key thing here is zone is basically three boxes wide. So there's a box over this way, there's a box in the center here, and there's the layer or the edge of zone that clicks and center are playing, which is this right hand side. The key thing whenever you box fight another team is you're trying to fight for the space and the control in the center of zone. So how do they do this? Clicks, grabs the wall, and then as you can see, it opens a wide edit and slides a cope. This might seem like a bad edit, as you can see, there's two players standing there, but you've got to remember, they're doing this on a right-hand peak, so this player right here probably can barely even shoot clicks, and he definitely can't shoot centers. It's basically a free double pump onto this player right here. So as you can see, they were to open up, hit this guy 68, and the key thing here is they should have stopped fighting it as soon as they double pump that player, and they should go ahead and get control of this box right here the center box right so you can imagine you're in the center box you control this wall so nobody can cut in from this side you control this wall over towards the side over this way as you can see and you basically control all of the edits around you on low ground just going to allow you to frag out however because of the fact that they're not able to actually do this quick enough as you can see they get blocked off as you can see right there now they run into a position where another team comes down onto low ground and cuts them off Another team cuts them off on the front side. And because of how quick these moving zones are, you need to be really on top of your game in terms of getting those early positions quick. These guys make a perfect play however in this situation. They decide to back up for a second and heal up in Storm. So they take their time to splash while everyone else on low ground is fighting ahead of them. So after these guys go ahead and chill back in Storm and use their whites for a second, Clicks able to hit this nice shot on this solo. Harry makes a mistake by not grabbing the mats. A lot of people, I know watching this, would not even think about the mats there. It's obviously solo with nothing. However, you still get 150 mats and crucially 100 mats worth of hearts, which is really important for actually doing this low ground claim and staying alive. Instead, Click decides to run forward and he does the perfect play, which is getting into the center square right here, as you can see. Whenever you own this center square, again, as I was just saying, you're going to have edits of people all around you. You can kill people backside, you can kill people on the left and the right. However, Clix is missing the one crucial piece of this box, which is going to be the top. And he ends up getting maxed. However, because centered is in the center of zone, he's able to go absolutely crazy here. Solos, 
one v one. There's bandages behind. Yeah. You're so good, bro. You're so fucking good. You're so yes, good. Bro. You're so good, Jeez, Tenet. Bro. You're so fucking good, baby. Eight, You're so bro. fucking good, Tenet. All right, that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new. I definitely learned a lot from watching Clicks and Scented. As usual, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I should have some new content coming out here on YouTube, duos or solos, whatever you guys prefer. And also the Masterclass update, as well as two new crazy Masterclass projects should be coming very soon as well.